dummy. There you go. I'm finally back in swing of things. Jeez, man, I am, you know, two weeks in Harrisburg can really screw up a man's mind. But you know what, Mike? You know, Hey, look, I'm going to calling you Mike. I'm, I'm, I'm mad. Listen, I, I, that, that, yeah, exactly. That's insulting. I will ne- never cross those lines again. But listen, Matt, all we do here in Philadelphia is win now. Apparently, I'm coming back, and I'm, uh, I'm seeing uh, uh, a Sixers win, a Wings win, a, Phil- a Phillies win, a walk-off win. But most importantly, this flyer season is not over. Not over yet. The, 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 uh, we have yet to fall off the cliff. You know, as yeah, the fat lady, she hasn't sung. So uh, I'm I'm ready to do some things here. So Matt, um, one nothing win. Say, Sam Harrison would have shut out. I mean, really, really spectacular things going on. You know, in this game again, it just kind of looked like uh, at first, you know, they let a two man advantage go slip by the wayside. I'm like, oh man, here we go. Typical Flyers. They're ready to pack their bags. Ready to pack this season in. But they come out of that second period with a punch. Uh, the Flyers do what they do best. You know, keeping this you know, season even more weirder with their shorthanded goal. And Travis Konechny records his 400th goal, goal. And then here we are heading in, you know, waiting for Tuesday. And now waiting, you know, prayfully that we can make it to the playoffs. But, Matt, I am going to pass it to you. Uh, your first initial overall reaction to, to Sam Harrison. Well, first of all, Pat, take a shot of oxygen. Relax. Uh, everything's going to be okay. Welcome back to uh, welcome yeah. back from Harrisburg, and I hope you did. I hope you enjoyed your your. So, Pat, let me ask you this because I've always been under the uh, under the impression that Pennsylvania actually ends at Harrisburg. Everything west of Harrisburg is actually Ohio. Uh, that's how I was raised, and that's how I was raised to understand. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed the outskirts of PA and the capital city the last two weeks. Yeah, yeah, um, I don't know who taught you that, but you know, that realm, <laughs> uh, that rule of thumb, but it is so true. I've learned that right. uh, as far so. as today, and I, and uh, you mentioned it, and I'm going to also, Steve mentions it here, still alive, absolutely. They are still alive. Uh, for a little context, I just want to kind of uh tell everybody, remind everybody how things started out today when the Flyers woke up this morning and strapped on the, uh, the skates for their morning skate, they, they had a huge day in front of them. A day that the playoff picture was going to come into a little bit more of a clearer point. Uh, Earlier today, the Islanders and the Rangers battled to a shootout Ranger win, but the Islanders picked up the necessary one point, which essentially clinches that third spot in the Metro, sixth overall in the East to the Islanders. So the Flyers uh, really kind of missed an opportunity there. Let that thing just uh, let let that position go, and it's gone. Uh, Then they don't have enough points or games remaining to catch the Islanders. So the Islanders are going to be your sixth seed in the East, but there's still a race to be had, and that was in that wild card spot to start the day. The Penguins were your wild card team at 86, but then the Capitals, uh, Red Wings, and Flyers all came in at 85 points uh, right behind the Penguins. The Flyers, of course, the only one of those three teams that I mentioned uh, with less than uh, 80, well, well, they have the less games remaining. The Flyers have, 80, uh, have now played 81 games, uh, and only have one more game remaining, whereas the Capitals, who are playing right now, and it's two-two, uh, Capitals Lightning in the third period, they'll have eighty. They'll have two remaining after this, and then so will Detroit and Pittsburgh, who are also playing tonight. But for the time being, Pat, we are back in the wild card. We are officially that number two seed in the that number eight seed in the East. So all is good. But Pat, all that to say this: I don't want it. I don't want it. The hell with this. I've seen enough of the Flyers this year. Give me the higher draft pick at this point. I don't want the playoffs right now. I want a higher draft pick. I know that this is my 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 form of tanking right now. I want a higher draft pick, but hell of a game. Urson battled his ass off. The Flyers battled their ass off. First period could have went, should have went differently. The five on three power play, as you mentioned, that goddamn negligent, uh, inept, incoherent, incompetent power play of this of this of this hockey let's call it a football team of this hockey team has to be addressed with either scores, scheme, philosophy, coaching. Something needs to be done about this power play heading into next season. We cannot go into next year with the same type of power play we've had. The shorthanded goal by Konechny, as you mentioned, the game winner, Urson made it stand up. I got him. I got to give him credit. The same person I've been seeing gives up nine goals before we get settled into the seats. But I got to give Urson and the Flyers credit today. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Al checking in goes, they're still alive. Yes, they are, Al. And then you got Cousin Steve checking in goes, let's go uh, Bruins. Let's go uh, Lightning. Yeah, listen, we need all the help we can get right now. And you, you kind of nailed it. It's just been, this has been the Flyers year. I mean, like I said, they absolutely stink on power plays. I mean, 0 and 3 today, 0 and 23 in their last game, 23 games. I mean, they, they've, they've been horrible. But, Pat, you know, 31, Pat, Pat, 31 for 253 on the season. 12% uh, effective on the power play, Pat. Pat. 12%. No, you, you don't. I look, I, I, and I, I'm a connecting guy. I'm a connecting guy, and listen, he he did his thing today. But this is the difference when you have a real playmaker in there because when you have a playmaker in there, he's guaranteed you on the power play to light that lamp. That's what the Ovechkins and the Crosbys and the same yep. same coaches of the world do. They light the lamp on power plays. They make sure you get penalized for those power play power plays. So. Um, yeah, but that, that's the thing, though. But, again, you know, like I said, just the flip side of it, they lead the league in yeah. shorthanded Colts. I mean, it's I mean, just it's it's mind-boggling. Yeah. It, it's just, you know, if, if, if Philip, the state of Philadelphia sports couldn't be any more weirder, uh, this is a prime example of it. But Capitals, it, it's, Capitals just scored with 10 minutes to go in the game. It's 3-2, Capitals. So, uh, just scored to make it 3-2. <laughs> great, great. I'm sorry, go uh, ahead, but, I didn't mean to take your thunder. No, man. no. Yeah, listen, uh, but, you know, I, I really want to, you know, we, we mentioned about Sam Harrison, and I thought he was really, really sharp. Like you said, in the last two weeks, I mean, I, if there was anybody who has been became my new whipping boy of the city of Philadelphia, it was Sam Harrison. But, however, you know, these last two games, uh, come stay, you know, come stand-up time, he came up and stood up to the plate. And, and today he was sharp, stopped 20 out of 20 goals, uh, 20 shots on that. I mean, he was phenomenal. I uh, just like the style of play. He was really in the zone. The defense in front of him looked well, well enough. And, you know, coming up and making some plays. Guys like, uh, of course, Nick Sealer was making some tough plays. Drysdale was making some, you know, big plays. Guys, you know, were doing that today on the you know, defensive zone. So I really liked them there. Um, but, yeah, like I said, I got to give kudos to the Flyers, you know, to the Flyers defense and Sam Harrison today. Yeah, uh, the, the first period was a little shaky, and I thought the first period was going to get away from them. Uh, Sam Erson came up the biggest of the day in that first period, and he kept the score, kept him scoreless. And of course, the Flyers blowing that five three advantage. Uh, man, I, I it's just it's just it's a it's a kick to the gut, man, when they can't score on a five on three power play. I, any professional hockey team should be able to score on a five on three. I don't care what level of hockey you're playing in. If you're being paid to play the sport of hockey. You should be able to put a goal in the net when you're five on three or six on four or whatever. But uh, it's just a kick in the junk for that. Uh, but they they clamped it down to their to their credit defensively. They clamped it down to second and third. And Erson stood on his head the rest of the way. Uh, they only gave up twenty shots. Pat, the Flyers are a you know they're stingy when it comes up. They're giving up the shots. Just they haven't been getting the goaltending uh, in order to keep any of the shots out of the net. But they got it today. Urson with the with the uh, shutout. Uh, did anybody have that on their bingo card that Urson was going to blank the Devils today? <laughs> uh, I don't think anybody had that one. So uh, you got to give my hats off to him, man. Hats off to him. No, because the, right away I go back to that ugly game up in North Jersey where you know I'm walking on eggshells with Sam Urson in you know between the pipes. But like I said, uh, no, no one had this down as their uh, on their fan duel. Nobody. Nobody. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, everyone's walked in, you know, on their with their sphincters all tightened up. But listen, he did it phenomenal. Uh, I, again, I cannot credit him enough today for the job he's done. And like you said too, Matt, you know, when you when you had the opportunity to to you know you had that five on three, you know, two man advantage, and, and you don't capitalize on it right away. I know, like I said, there was a plenty of time for hockey, but right away in my mind, I said, "Oh, here we go. We 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 are yeah. we're, we're done. This is over." And uh, no, and. Uh, when, when you have a defense and the goaltending like that instantly responds after two weeks of bad hockey, uh, listen, sometime this, this team was going to turn around a little bit. And uh, I don't know what's been going on for the last couple of games, but uh, they, they made all of your right adjustments at the wrong time uh, because now you still, like you said, you're, you're, you're on life support. And uh, in order to do that, you're going to need some bad, you know, bad things happen to, some, to the other team. So uh, we'll see what yep. happens. So, but like, uh, so, Angry Anthony checked in the show. He says, hey, guys. And then he also said, Flowers should be 
should, should flowers should have should have of, of put up a lot more goals than just one listen uh, angry anthony this might have been like the smartest thing you've said uh through the course of you and i you know you interacting into the show but yeah i i think definitely the flyers should have had a lot more goals than tonight but, yeah, and especially that third period the flyers were turning a lot of pucks over in the neutral zone they were shooting a they were waffling early in the third period. I mean, they were bringing, they were t constantly bringing the offensive pressure, uh, creating shots, and not one got by, not one. So, uh, yeah, angry Anthony, I'll give you your, your flowers for the brief moment. Uh, Nick Sealer, uh, cousin Steve says Nick Sealer with 199 blocks on the year is <laughs> that's crazy. It's it's it, yeah, it is it's, crazy, and they ended up with how many more? They ended up with some. What was the blocks on the day today that felt the Flyers had? I think it was like 25 or 26 more today, block shots. It's just, it's, it's 22. 22 more block shots today. I mean, and you're right, Nick Sealer has pretty much taken a lot of them. And uh, you, you can't, you really can't give out enough credit to that. And, and a player that wants to actually sacrifice his body for that, it's a hard way to make a living, but it's an effective way if you want to, if you're willing to do it. And, uh, no one apparently does it better in the league this year than Nick Sealer. So, hats off to Nick Sealer. And uh, you know, when the season's over, you know the uh, the first ice bath is on me, Nick. You deserve it, man, boy. Woo. Hey, listen, um, and like it's Matt. You said it at the top of the hour. You you said, you know, pack it in. I just want the higher draft pick right now. You know, you don't like to be that tank guy, but just tank it up right now. I mean, listen. If they could get look, it's it's to me, it's it's either way right now. I, I was that guy. Get in the door. I understand what they are. I understand that what the needs are of this team. That it's it's right there in front of you. They need a goaltender. Uh, this is a nice story. If they can sneak into the playoffs, great. Get you know, get the guys on that team some experience in the playoffs. Wonderful, terrific. You know, shows you a little bit more ahead of schedule than what you were. Uh, again, no one's going to discredit this, you know, this season for what it is. So, but the big dots are, um, you know, it, it's it's. I know, like a lot of fans will be out there upset because they didn't get in the door. But you know, like I said, you you just got to take for what it is. And like I said, if you don't get in the door, you only get a higher draft pick. So it's yeah. it's a win win for the Flyers. Yeah, I don't listen. I, I I want everybody to understand this that if they get into the playoffs, it'd be great. It'd be an outstanding uh, playoff. Hockey is great. Playoff NHL hockey is probably some of the best hockey or some of the best sports of the season. I, and I, I'd love to be part of that and to bring it back to Philadelphia since for the first time since um, what was it nineteen twenty or eighteen nineteen was the last time we played uh, hockey or playoff hockey here. Uh, I, I know yeah. they made it in nineteen twenty, but that was the bubble year, so they didn't play here. Yes. Uh, and that, and they so yeah whatever it was eighteen nineteen whatever the first last year that was bringing it back would be great and and also it, that place would be rocking the orange hankies and all that I would love that would love it but um, twelve a number twelve overall draft pick I would love that too and right now that to me has more substantial returns than a um, you know kind of a uh, a hype playoff appearance that's really not going to go anywhere and. I, listen, I, I want to be in the playoffs when I know I can win. I want to be in the playoffs when we're a legitimate threat to somebody to win and to advance and to win the Stanley Cup. To keep this great story going, which it has been a great story, to me, it's not worth giving up a high draft pick. So that's where I stand on no, that. He, it's, it's not not a tanking mentality. It's just the reality, you know? Right, but Matt, look at look at the movie that's right there in front of us, right? The, the year the Flyers' names come off the cup. Then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, Sam Harrison has found his way. First round of the playoffs, they play the Rangers. Brawl Street versus Broadway. They bounce out the Rangers, and then they go on this miracle run. Man, and this crazy. Sam Harrison. <laughs> you're insane. <That's laughs> you're insane, okay? It's not going to happen, I've seen man. It. No, I understand no, the movie not. concept of it all. Yeah, I get it and all. And, and I know the St. Louis Blues did a similar thing a couple of years back and where they ran – Ran rough shot, ran the table, but the Blues had goalies. The Blues had Bennington, who was on, who was standing on his head uh, on one hand uh, throughout that season, and they had goal scorers already on that team. So uh, it's a little bit of a different thing. There's no, there's not a snowball's chance in hell that the Flyers are going to want a Stanley Cup this year. Uh, and I would no, rather, I, much rather take a number twelve overall pick. No, and, and to piggyback off that, that bar in South Philly, you know, 
Gloria, that with all that, should be bound, banned from the Wells Fargo <laughs> Center. Should not be coming on now I to agree. come down and hang out. I, I don't know, I don't know who the people are down there, but they should not be down there at all. So no, they should all be banned down there. No one's allowed in. So no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but listen, uh, great story. Let's get in some of these great comments here. Uh, Angry Anthony goes, "TK's goal is night. Nice." Uh, Cousin Steve said, "House either way." And then he goes. Uh, Cavs goal was huge. So, yeah, that's what happens. But anyway, um, let's get into some of these. Uh, why we're here, let's talk some about some of these great sponsors of the Edge of Philly Sports. Um, why I'm here. So, guys, save yourself 10% off using that promo code EOP10. Share Tickets Town, great prices, no hidden fees, sports, concerts, theaters, share tickets town.com. Uh, Zach, where you want to go? And then, of course, uh, work, Dave and Work on Compensation, Medical Vehicles, Injury, Personal uh, personal Injury, Criminal Law, Medical Vehicle Accidents. Hit my man, David R. Cherry Esquire, 610 So, guys, like I said, we have, and of course, Philly Sports Trips. Guys, hit up Philly Sports Trips today. Uh, look, you can make a trip out to you know to Chicago. You know, July Fourth weekend. You know, Philly Sports Trips has the hookup for the Phillies this year. Uh, you go, you know, Fourth of July weekend, Father's Day weekend. They have uh, a trip out to Baltimore. They got a trip out to Fenway Park. They have trips all over the place. I mean, it's going to be a great time. Like I said, go to Edge of, you know, phillysportstrips.com and tell them EUP sent you. Well, guys, um, again, Matt, you want to take it away? Your top three players of the game? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do the fly the three flyer stars of the game real quick. But before we do that, let's break some of this game down real quick. It wasn't much of an offensive game. Uh, we mentioned the one only goal by the Flyers and anybody else was Travis Konechny in the second period. A shorthanded goal. His 32nd, I believe, of the season. It was, uh, it was 33rd. It was from Lawton and Sealer at the 10.50 mark. And that was it. The Flyers made it all stand up. As they uh, as they handled their business one nothing today down at the center, uh, shot totals in this game were the uh, Flyers outshot the Devils eleven six in the first six five in the second nine four and the Devils outshot the Flyers nine four in the third, showing a lot of grit and comeback. The Flyers really was sort of pushed there in the third period for the game. The Flyers outshot the Devils twenty one to twenty. Flyers were over three as Pat mentioned on the power play, a putrid another putrid 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 display of uh, special teams hockey for the Flyers, but they were. They did score that shorthanded goal, the Travis Konechny goal, their 16th shorthanded goal of the season. Devils were 0 for 1 on the power play. The Flyers blocked 22 shots. The Devils blocked 9. The Flyers gave the puck away 9 times to the Devils 6, and they took it away 10 times to the Devils 2. Uh, and then that was pretty much the uh, all the real technical issues. Let's talk now my three players of the game. I'm going to go with the aforementioned Nick Sealer. Uh, did not really – did get an assist for, his, for all his shot blocking – he did get an assist today. Uh, it was uh, it was on the goal, and uh, I'm gonna give him my third my third star of the game. I have I'm gonna keep track of this next year. I promise you. I want to see how many times Nick Sealer makes it into my three flyer stars <laughs> of the game because he's been there a ton this year. So Nick Sealer is my number three. My number two star of the game, Travis Konechny. It is no secret that until the Flyers find more talent, until the Flyers find that superstar duo, the, until the Flyers find that superstar, that it, as Travis Konechny goes, so do the Flyers. If Konechny is scoring, if Konechny is involved in the play, the Flyers are more than likely winning or being in a very competitive game. When he is not, that's when things go sideways for the Flyers. Konechny today, a goal, the goal, he had one point. Uh, he is my number two star. And my number one star, you got to give it to the goaltender. Sam Erson saved all. All of the shots that he faced, 20 out of uh, 20, and he gets the uh, gets the shutout and the win. And there you have my three stars of the game, Pat. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's no secret. I think you and I have pretty much just assumed up uh, the three stars the same in a little bit of a different order because I'm going to say, you know, I I'm going to give – I'm going to give, you know, I'm going to go Travis connecting, you know, my third, again, just the way he, you know, kind of like, again, 
got set the tempo. And like you said, if he don't, you know, the Flyers go as far as he can carry them. I mean, listen, Owen Tip is a good support piece. Uh, it's He's a nice story as well with this Flyer, Flyer saying, and of course, when he's not, and when Travis Connecting, he's not scoring, he's the only kind of guy you can rely on to find the back of that. But that's your only two pieces moving forward. Um, so, yeah, I got to give Travis Connecting number three. Number two, I got to give the Nick Siller. I mean, this guy is like, I think what, five, Hits away, you know, block shots away from breaking uh, someone's record. Uh, so yeah. I got to give him his due. I mean, this guy, I mean, we, we talked about Travis Konechny being that piece. I mean, for as far as defense, he's been the he's been that piece for you on defense. He's been what the what goaltenders want in front of him. So he's been that shield. I mean, I, I would hate to see what that buy looks like, you know, in, in this like you said, in an ice shower because he's got probably multiple bruises up and down his body. But uh, I got to give it to Nick Sealer, man. Just kind of uh, being that soldier when you need him. Um, and then, of course, I got to give Sam Harrison number one. Again, just stood on his head. Two games back to back where he's been solid. Uh, you can shut out, a shutout against the Devils. So uh, that doesn't come around often against a rival team. And uh, way to go, kid. So, yeah, that's my three stars of the game. Do you want me to go run the board? Uh, let me do that because I got a live scoring update right now with three minutes and 14 nice. seconds remaining. The Capitals are now leading the Lightning 4-2. to two, So that is not good news as the Capitals just scored to make it 4-2 to two, as, of course, the Flyers are needing the Capitals to lose. But, yeah, I'll take you around. Let's go around the rest of the scores today, Pat. Uh, I mentioned the Capitals game. It's now 4-2 with about three minutes to go. It is 4-1 Detroit over Toronto with uh, they're just starting the second period as the Flyers are. That's not good news either for you Flyer fans out there as we need Detroit to lose as well. Uh, is one one Canadians and Senators. They are just starting the second period and uh, it is nothing nothing Blue Jackets and Predators out there in Music Town. Uh, they're just getting underway later tonight. The Boston Bruins and the Penguins and another scoreboard watching type game for Flyer fans. Canucks and Oilers at 10. 10.30 are the Ducks and the Kings. 10.30 are the Wild and uh, the Sharks. Games that have gone final. The Rangers beat the Islanders 3-2 in a shootout, which, as I mentioned earlier, is the reason why the Flyers are no longer eligible to win that third position in the Metro or the sixth spot in the East because with that tie or that point that the Islanders got, they have now secured that position. It was the Stars 3-1 over the Kraken. The Jets all over the Avalanche, 7 0, and the Panthers over the Sabres, 3 2. And there's your look around a very interesting day in the National Hockey League as the Flyers and their playoff hopes literally are hanging in the balance today, and we're not getting much help from the teams we need help from. No, not at all. I mean, listen, you're, again, those other teams are kind of packing in, they're running the scrimmages. Uh, with, with, you know, for them, it's preseason, but for. Uh, those other teams, yeah, they're trying to fight their money themselves into the playoffs. Looks, listen, everyone's got the same mindset as the Flyers, trying to win, win, win. Um, yeah, but yeah, you know, I mean, it, it it is what it is. I mean, everybody's trying to get in. And the Flyers work. got no one to blame but themselves. They had it in their hands. The Flyers had this in their hands, and they have no one to blame but themselves for this whole situation. So, yeah, I totally agree, Matt. I mean, listen, uh, two weeks of playing bottom feeder teams would cash you in. I mean, if you would have had a bunch of those wins, who knows? You could have probably been sitting in the, in the fourth seat. I don't know. I'm just hypothetically say, saying. But well, you at least you say six. You would have, they would have had that six, six seat at least. You would have been locked in uh, for sure. But it, it, it's a shame. Like you say, they have no one about lane but themselves. For People could say that they lost steam. You know, you could use that, go that route. I just think, you know, it, the clock struck midnight at the wrong time uh, for the team because it, it rears ugly popped up head. Uh, the general manager, to me, showed a little bit of a concern trying to rush in a backup goalie in here, uh, trying, I guess, show, I don't know if you want to say uh, the same kind of uh, playing again, you know, playing for someone's job. But yeah, they, they, they could have done. Um, it was a panic move, and they just knew they were just not going to have it. They just they didn't have all their beliefs in St. Marison. Or now, Steve you know, says you know, ninety four points was his target. That was a doable target. That was there. Ninety four points was a was a viable number until, and even coming out of the gauntlet, and uh, with those last seven games or six games against these teams that we're facing right now, that ninety four points was a definite definite achievable number. Number, Steve. It was just again, it's a shame. It's a shame. Yeah, and uh, just like the conversation I had at a 
with, with Bell Melser and uh, sat there with him in the press box. He said, and that was that Saturday they played against Chicago. They said they can't put away the Chicago team. They shouldn't even be in the playoffs. Well, they got embarrassed that day, and right from there, it's been ugly. So, uh, but yeah, it, 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 listen, it is what it is. They have to blame for themselves, but we can only see what happens Tuesday, and hopefully, I don't know, a magical thing can happen. If not, uh, listen, this was a good win, but it went from nothing. Uh, so it could just be bombed down to. Uh, so listen, if anything, it was a good Wayne Simmons night. Uh, you know, if anything. Yeah, that's but anyways, right. Well, have, happy retirement, you know, Wayne Simmons. He retires as a flyer. It's good. It's good for him. The, yeah, the Wayne train comes in and retires as the flyer. Uh, Matt, final plugs, thoughts, and what is your next project? Uh, well, we're working on a lot of different things. I'll let you in on a couple of them right now. Of course, if you've been watching the social media side of things in our webpage, we're breaking things down on the MLB uh, draft side of things. We're going to cover the MLB draft. The fight's final. We'll cover the MLB draft during the All-Star break this year. So we're going to get re- we're getting you ready for that. We're also getting you ready for the NHL draft. That's right, folks. The NHL, we're going to cover that too in the early part of July, the Clear the Ice crew, which is not that many it's not that hard. It's not that it's the same people with just different titles. So uh it's not 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 hard for us to kind of figure this out. We all know who we are, but we're going to cover we're going to cover the NHL draft this year and we're dropping player cards for that. So you'd be checking out there those are coming out on our social media. Matter of fact, I did one today or yesterday. So uh be on the lookout for those. Uh, of course, I got my my also my weekly show talking Philly sports Matty B every Monday night at eight p.m. and uh, continuing breaking down Flyers prospects, breaking down Phillies prospects, and breaking down the two drafts. Uh, we're going to keep ourselves busy as we move forward into, and then also the fighting's final. Now that we're you know obviously things might be coming to an end here, all of our, our of our attention will shift over there. So a lot of stuff going on here on the network. So could not be happier. And um. Uh, we had a great year, Pat, regardless of what happens and regardless, we're going to have the opportunity and the honor, Pat, because it is an honor to finish out the season on Tuesday here on the, on the show. Let me pop that up for everyone to see. So uh, it is an honor for us to figure that out and to be part of that crew to kind of close things out Tuesday night against the Capitol. So it's been a great season and then we've done so many positive things. We have a, we look forward to a great off season. I, and I'm, I know I might be putting the cart before the horse a little bit, but I got a feeling that we're not going to the playoffs and 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 that's it. So, but uh, yeah, please be on the lookout for everything that's going on. <laughs> uh, uh, Steve, you referring to me as the next Matty B? Listen, we're from the same neck of the woods. You know, we got the same last. You know, you know Patty B, Matty B. But listen, the Mayfair Mafia is going to wrap this bad boy up uh, again, guys. Tomorrow, I only got two projects at hand. Tomorrow, uh, I'm doing a, of course, PM and AM with Mike Laro. Uh, I'll be posting the show. So God bless your souls. If you guys hoping to oversleep the nine o'clock hour, I don't want to blame you. Uh, so, but of course, and then I have the, uh, since it's national televised game, I will be doing a union post game show as well uh, for you soccer heads. So guys being in the alert for that. Uh, so yes, like you said, EOP is doing it all. And of course, like Matty B said uh, right here, this crew right here, the, the PO, the clear the ice fighting finals uh, the four horsemen if you want to call us of, of the edge of philly sports always doing post game shows always bringing them to you live uh there's no better place so guys check out edge of philly sports subscribe today go to you go to google hook it up and subscribe to your newsletter get all the go- get all your articles uh matty b is like clockwork him and al are just constantly pumping out articles guys are doing a hell of a job over there so guys check them out uh, so for that, for my main cousin Steve, uh, he, thank well, you, Steve. So uh, g- give me some more backstory on this. Was was he on the ba- bases or was he behind the plate? What and cadet? What is that? Is that is that what is that like Babe Ruth? What what, what age level is cadet? Do you know that uh, Pat? What age level cadet baseball is? No, like I have no idea. Thirteen U, twelve U. What is it, Steve? What, I, what level I, is it? Yeah, he's gonna have to break that down uh, to to bring that up. So. Uh, yeah, it, it's been like I said. It's it's been a. Uh, uh, that's what he meant about the next uh, behind the plate. Oh. He says he was behind the plate. What what age group is cadet? Is it is it like twelve U, ten U? What is it? What is yeah. it, Steve? Tell me. Hurry up! Come on, we're burning we're burning daylight here. I want to know the level. But anyway, Steve, what, before you let me know the level, uh, every time make sure you always remind him the call strikes no matter what and not to f and suck. All right, that's what you tell every plate umpire before they start call strikes and don't f and suck. And then, and, and that's what you do. Ten you, uh, challenging level of baseball for a fourteen-year-old. Hell is a challenging level of baseball for a fifty-year-old. 
Uh, good for him. <laughs> good for him, Steve. This is how you fix it for all you umpire, all you umpire haters out there. If you really want to change it, then become like Steve's godson and start umpiring games right now. Because that's how you're going. That's the only way you're going to be able to change it is by making the actual change yourself. So congratulations to your godson, Steve. Good for him. All right, guys. Well, listen, for me, Matty B, we'll be back here Tuesday to wrap it up the season. So, guys, listen, this has been a heck of an honor doing shows. But I love doing it. I love this crew. So, guys, we'll see you Tuesday night.